today's presentation is about priority skills for engineers on the island of Ireland and reporting back on some key stakeholder perceptions. So this is reporting back on some emerging insights from a professional skills survey that was conducted amongst engineering employers, academics and students on the island of Ireland. And that's part of the Profess 12 project, which, as you'll see on the first slide there, stands for Professional Skills for Engineering Students, a summer school to achieve SDG 12. So in terms of the agenda for the presentation today, there are three main areas I wanted to cover. Firstly, to say a little bit about the Profess 12 project and the team and to cover the aim of the project overall. Then in terms of setting the wider context to talk briefly about the SDGs and the importance of those for engineering students and indeed all students, the skills survey and the methodology there, and then move on to share some of the emerging insights. The team you'll see featured on the slide here, um, there's a, a team of six. So that includes two staff from Ulster University and four from TU Dublin. Um, you'll see on the slide here there are four different work packages in the project and the skills survey that I'm speaking about particularly today connects in with two of those. Work package one which began with a literature review which informed the design of the survey. Work package two which is about reporting back on the findings from the survey itself. So the next slide gives us a view of an engineer of the future and starts the conversation maybe in terms of what are the skills requirements looking ahead. So on the left of this slide, we have a range of skills that I'm sure you all might recognise or might shout out if I asked you to suggest some skills that engineers need. These are maybe typical, traditional, harder type skills. On the right of the slide, however, is, I guess, the direction of travel or how we see um, and how the literature suggests that engineers need to broaden out their skill set. So to start thinking about working um, collaboratively, thinking about communications, thinking about ethics and social responsibility. So quite different from the core or more traditional set. These issues have been very nicely articulated in the paper. Um, so this was based on research undertaken in Europe, um, in Denmark, Finland, France and Ireland. And it interviewed academics, employers and students and looked to identify competences required to prepare engineering students um, to address challenges posed by the SDGs. So there are 53 competences in this table. They're grouped into six different sets. I guess what the Profess 12 project has sought to do is to say, well, let's not try and fit them all in at once. Let's make a start. How can we contextualise these for the island of Ireland? Just this slide summarises the rationale, the aims of the survey to inform the design of the summer school to break, provide us with data to um, highlight priorities and therefore inform engineering solutions, engineering education solutions. Um, the survey was conducted online using Microsoft Forms, ethical approval was obtained and the invitation was shared widely with engineering students, academics and employers. It captured a range of data, both in terms of um, respondent profile and also perceptions. So um, having gathered all of this data, um, just to share some of the um, emerging things, we asked respondents to rate their awareness of the SDGs. So that was a five point um, Likert scale that we used. So one's not at all aware. Five is extremely aware. 
So overall, at the bottom of the slide here, we can see that the overall awareness is 3.2. I think the interesting thing about this slide is the quite stark difference between Northern Ireland respondents and respondents in Ireland. The next slide then on PACS awareness, again, we're looking at the results by region, but we've also um, disaggregated it by the categories of respondent. Um, so you'll see in this table, we have respondents grouped in terms of whether they're academics, employers or students. Um, it's interesting that the column at the right hand side illustrates that over half the respondents were students and about a quarter each were either academics or employers. When we then look at each of those groups and identify what they've said in terms of awareness, again, there are some key points coming through. The highest level of awareness is 4.1 amongst academics, perhaps not surprisingly. The lowest level of awareness, 2.8 overall amongst students. And those findings are similar um, in both jurisdictions, but figures much higher in Ireland than in Northern Ireland. The largest differences there are um, if we look, for example, at multinational employers in Ireland, the level of awareness is 3.6 and Northern Ireland just 2.7. So quite a, a big gap in differences there. Respondents were invited to use a five point scale where um, five is most important, one is least important. So what we have on this slide um, is illustrating the top five most important competences. First of all, across all respondents. So we can see on the right hand side of this table, um, problem solving comes out as the hi highest rated competence with a rating of 4.74. So clearly near the top of the scale. Um, that's followed by communication, teamwork, respect for others and critical thinking. Um, what you notice there is all the scores on this table are very high. The, the lowest score here is 4.48. And right across all 53 competences, generally the scores were very high, typically 3.5 or higher. There was one outlier, which was entrepreneurship which was about 3.3 overall and considerably lower than the other competences. Touched briefly on what we found in terms of awareness of the SDGs, clearly um, higher in Ireland than in Northern Ireland and, and potential for uh, raising awareness further. In terms of implication, there's scope to raise awareness further, particularly in Northern Ireland and also amongst employers and students. Some of the actions coming out of that could be to inform the design of future engineering education programmes or indeed to um, look to identify learning um, from effective initiatives elsewhere. So that could be in other jurisdictions or it could be things that um, professional engineering and um, bodies are doing or in, um, indeed industry bodies. In terms of the um, priority competences, again, there's um, with the degree of similarity, there's potential for collaboration between institutions north and south. Um, and there's, um, I, I guess, a, a role to consider building on elements of the summer school that have worked well in, in terms of helping to reinforce um, those most important competences. Um, I think also it's interesting to think about the roles for both academics and, and for employers. So in terms of the engineering education provision, there's scope to think about what some of this means for the design of engineering curricula. But there's also um, something around maybe managing student expectations given the different um, priorities that we see reflected amongst different types of employers. Um, also for employers, there's 
um, potentially more of a role to think about in terms of collaborating with higher education providers in terms of collaborations to develop um, or to support the development of future engineers, particularly in the context of SDGs. Um, in terms of um, further work, as I've said, we're um, working on the evaluation of the summer school at the moment and dissemination in terms of conferences and papers. There is more work for us to do in terms of interrogating the survey data further, um, perhaps considering how some of the findings from the survey compare with national accreditation criteria and also to give more consideration um, to the issue of mobility of engineers. Um, again, thinking about the global nature of the challenges of the SDGs. Just to acknowledge our funders, the North South Research Program, and also to um, acknowledge the input we've had from students, academics and employers who've contributed to the project in many ways. That concludes my presentation. Thank you for your attention and I'm happy to take any questions.